In this video, we will review how to solve problems with two unknown variables. Tom wants to go to his local theater to watch a movie for his birthday party. There are 10 people in total for his party. Each adult ticket costs $12, while each ticket for a child costs $9. Tom's mom had to pay $105 for everyone's tickets. How many adults and children were at this party? In this problem, we have to figure out the number of adults at this party and the number of children. Let's assign one variable for each unknown. Let A equal the number of adults and C equal the number of children. Write an equation for the fact that a total of 10 people are at the party using these variables. That's right. We know that there are A adults at this party and C children at this party. In total, there are 10 people, so A plus C must equal 10. Write an equation for the fact that Tom's mom had to pay $105 for all the tickets. Yes, if each adult ticket costs $12 and there are A adults, we need to multiply a $12 ticket for each of the A people. In the same way, if each child's ticket costs $9 and there are C children, we have to multiply 9 by C. The cost of adult tickets plus the cost of children tickets must equal the total cost of $105. So 12A plus 9C equals 105. Now we have two equations, each with two variables. If we only focus on one, we can't solve for just A or just C without having another variable in the solution. Because of this, both equations need to work together to find an answer to the unknowns. The general rule is, the number of equations you need will be the same as the number of unknown variables. So for two unknowns, you will need two equations, which we have. There are three well-known ways to solve for A and C, graphing, substitution, and elimination. Graphing these two equations by hand is the least convenient way to solve this, unless you have a calculator. And elimination is really mathy, so we will just focus on substitution. With substitution, we will focus only on one equation to solve for A or C. In this case, we will solve for C, but in general, it doesn't matter. However, we should always be solving A and C in the most convenient way possible. Which equation is easier to solve for C? Exactly, A plus C equals 10 is way easier to solve for C than 12A plus 9C equals 105 because all we need to do is subtract A from both sides. This gives us C equals 10 minus A. Step one complete. We can substitute this equation into our second equation. We will replace the C in the second equation for 10 minus A, since we know C equals 10 minus A. This turns our two equations into one, but now we only have one variable, A, so we can solve it. We use the distributive property of multiplication to figure out 9 times 10 minus A, and then combine like terms. What is A? We multiply 9 by 10 to get 90, and then add the 9 times A. Our equation now looks like this, 12a plus 90 minus 9a equals 105. We can combine the 12a and negative 9a together to equal 3a, and then subtract 90 from both sides, leaving us with 15. 3a equals 15. To isolate a, we divide each side by 3 for a to equal 5, but we're not done. What does a equals 5 mean? That's right. We now know that there are five adults at Tom's party. So how many children are there? Well, if there are 10 people in total and five of them are adults, the other five people must be children. We just used our first equation, a plus c equals 10, to substitute a for five to find c, the number of children. By subtracting five from both sides, we found that there are five children as well. In your next lab experiment, you think about Tom and his birthday party as you drop a 65 gram piece of iron at 215 degrees Celsius into a coffee cup calorimeter with 85 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the water? Q is the amount of heat transferred. It equals the mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. I won't go into too much of the specifics for thermodynamics, but don't worry about the units for now. Using this formula, substitute the variables for the numbers we know for the loss of heat of the piece of iron the specific heat capacity is 0.45 joules per gram degrees Celsius for iron. We know the mass of the iron is 65 grams, so we can just use that for M. 
The specific heat capacity is 0.45 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature is 215 degrees Celsius. We want to find the final temperature, and we don't know how much heat is being released by the iron into the water. The equation for the amount of heat absorbed by the water looks like this. Negative Q equals 85 times 4.2 times Tf minus 25. There's a negative in front of the Q because although the amount of heat absorbed by the water equals the amount of heat released by the iron, the signs of released and absorbed are the opposite. The negative is to balance the sign so that we can only focus on the magnitude. Use the method of substitution to find the final temperature if we know that the final temperature for the water and the iron will be the same. We can substitute the Q in negative Q equals 85 times 4.2 times Tf minus 25 with 65 times 0 0.45 times Tf minus 215 from the first equation for the release of heat from iron. Now we can just solve for the final temperature. Once we isolate Tf on one side, we are left with 39 degrees Celsius.